Hey guys, Ed Diaz here with Movement Mortgage, and I'm here with this guy, Brian, of Dead Eye Coffee Bar here in South San Francisco. So, so thank you so much, man, for uh, jumping on my YouTube channel. This is kind of just really informal. This is a uh, fireside chat with Uncle Ed kind of thing I always like to say. So give me a give me a sense. I was really struck by your by really your tenacity to open up a business, and you're such a young guy, man. As we were talking at the at the South San Francisco Chamber Mixer. I said, I got to interview this guy, man. So tell me, uh, what what was the impetus to start this? You know what? The passion starts with doing something that you love. Yeah. And, and coffee is something that I've grown to love. I didn't always love coffee. Growing up, I hated coffee. You hated coffee I at hated the beginning? Coffee. Mom drank coffee every day. And what? it was this Vietnamese coffee that was Ooh, dark. Ooh, yeah. I know the Vietnamese and, coffee. And muddy. And the only thing that helped me out was the condensed milk that they drowned it in. <laughs> right. 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 It kind of, it was hiding the taste exactly. of coffee. Exactly. So I'm just drinking condensed milk at that point. Right. Right. So I didn't like coffee growing up. And I started drinking coffee in college because everyone else was doing it. Because when I was studying with these guys, yeah, they're sense. drinking coffee and I'm just sitting there. And I wanted to be a part of something. So <laughs> you wanted to fit in, right? Exactly. So then I started drinking coffee to mentally stimulate myself, thinking that, oh yeah, this helps me stay up. But I found that it doesn't. Like, I can drink coffee and go to sleep. Yeah. I can drink coffee and it has no effect yeah. on my body. That's um, a trip. So after a while, when I started working, um, in a corporate environment, I drank coffee just to drink coffee. It was something to do. I uh -huh. got up and walked to the break room and grabbed six cups of coffee a day Whoa. because it was just something to break the monotony of sitting behind a desk. Right. Right. It's like getting up to go to the water cooler. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, about seven, eight years ago, I started drinking okay. coffee and I asked myself, why am I drinking this? If I don't like it, why am I drinking it? Right. And it, it hit me. I was like, you know what? I have to find better coffee. Maybe I'll like better coffee. And that's how my passion and love for coffee grew. Do you remember that point in time when it switched, that, that tipping point of like not liking it to liking it? Do you remember that moment? I do. You I do? do? Yeah, okay. I do. And it was just walking around in San Francisco and I walked into Psych Class. Right. I believe was the first one that I walked into and I ordered a coffee. And that's when I was like, what Whoa. is this? What is this? Pour over? What? What is this? <laughs> right. You know? And they have it. It looks like a. Yeah. It looks like a chemistry lab. Right. I was like, like, what is this? I'm like, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I'll get a pour over, even if it's two dollars more than a regular right. cup of coffee. Right. Let me try it. And that was the first time I realized that you know what? I can drink coffee for taste. I can drink coffee for the subtleness of each bean. That was the turning point that was for me as well. Point. You know, right. and I think I mentioned to you, I'm one of those guys too that I can drink coffee at 11 o'clock at night, which I do, and it really doesn't do anything to me. I just go right to sleep, and that's because I've been drinking it since I was six months old. I mean, literally in my culture, half coffee, half milk, we call it cafe con leche. It's kind of how we rolled, and right. so I grew up with it, and I actually love the taste. However, it's a blessing and a curse because if it's bad coffee, Sorry guys, yeah, I'm a little bit of a coffee snob. Uh, I'll just say it, it is atrocious. When I see a lot of head on a cup of coffee and all that, uh, the bubbles, I know that that's going to be bitter. See, so I know some of these things, which I know, you know, you're a ninja at this, you know, you know about coffee. And there's a big difference. It's almost like tequila, you know, people do, oh, I can't stand tequila. It's got this afterburn and, and then the hangover. Well, guess what? I, I'm sorry to tell you, you're drinking bad tequila. It's got way too much sugar. And it's just not good tequila. Great tequila should have no aftertaste and you shouldn't be getting a hangover. Well, with coffee, if you have to put a lot of stuff in it, you're on the wrong side of the coffee. Absolutely. Purity not, is one, but also the quality. You're not drinking really good coffee. So tell me about, about the coffee here at Dead Eye. What's the difference between here and everything else is outside of these windows? You know what, first off, I would never tell you how to drink your coffee. It's your preference. You drink it however you'd like. Yeah. I just want to give people in this community an option. Different options. It's a great approach. You know, is, is how I like to kind of just approach life. If you have a choice, you make your choices. Totally. Right? You 100%. make your choices. Um, the coffee that we focus on here, of course, you know, we're not in the business of making people wait five minutes, six minutes for a cup of coffee. No, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes people just want to grab and go. Right. We'll, we'll offer that batch brew quick cup of coffee, but our focus is on quality coffee. Yeah. Now we're, we're actually working with a uh, local roaster. 
out in Fremont called Devout Coffee, and they have amazing um, coffee and an amazing staff. You know, they're great people over there. So I, I like to start and support, and you know, I've gotten a lot of support from them as well, but like the smaller roasters, the guys that actually pay attention to what they're doing. Yeah, and the sourcing of it, right? The Before sourcing. they get the actual Absolutely. beans. Is Absolutely. it a huge farm that is just, Absolutely. you know, doing numbers or is it one that really gets hot and heavy right. into it? Like in my grandfather's farm, man, growing up as a kid, I just, I remember, right. you know, the passion behind picking it because you have to pick the, the berries one at a time and then putting it out on these gigantic, uh, parking lots, yeah, right? right, and letting the sun bake it, and yeah, just that yeah. whole process, man. I, I remember mean, for us, it was like a religion. For sure, for sure. I mean, that, that's one thing that we don't realize is how much work goes it. into that cup of coffee. It's and huge. it starts with these farmers, and it starts with these small family farmers that uh, also have a passion for what they're doing. Yeah. And in, you know, the guys that I work with, they're cognizant of that, and they want to support these local small farming families so it's about sourcing good coffee but it's also about kind of giving back to like the smaller families um and and that, that's something that i look at doing is giving back to the community you know in, in one way or another you kind of have to work and understand the community to be able to kind of thrive in the community i i agree you know and coffee to me it's not just a liquid beverage it's really a way to build community as you have said too often we go into these coffee houses and we walk in and everybody's alone everybody's behind their laptop or looking at their phone nobody's interacting for me personally my mini vacation or a staycation as we call them now is having a cup of coffee and having these kind of conversations and really connecting with people at a human level. We live in such a fast paced world that I think that one of the things that we're forgetting is that sense of community. So people don't know their neighbors. Nobody's having coffee right. talk. Let's just have a conversation, talk about things that really, really matter besides how are we gonna make 10 grand more this month, right? Everybody is so obsessed with the latest phone, the watch, the bigger house, the car, the this, the materialism, where we've forgotten, well, what's your name? Everybody has a name, everybody has a story. So you mentioned something about corporate experience. So tell, tell me when you decided to make that switch and say, you know what, I'm just bailing from the corporate thing and you I'm know, gonna go do my thing. That's the thing though, I'm still in the corporate environment. Ah, I just okay. make time for my passion. Because oh, I know at the end of the okay. day, at some point, this is something that I'm passionate about, and this is something that I want to grow. So I'm doing this for myself. Ah, right. so let's future cast then. Yes. What's what's your life look like in five years then? Hopefully, uh, all coffee. Hopefully, all coffee. Now, when it makes sense for me to walk away and focus completely, one hundred percent, into growing this enterprise, you will do that. I will. You'll do know that. when the time is good. Exactly. What's mom say? Mom loves it. I mom bet. loves it. Growing up, mom and grandma, they had restaurants in Vietnam. Um, coming here, you know, they got rid of the restaurants, but they had small operations. They had delis along the way. Oh, um, okay. So they, they love it. They're entrepreneurs. So it's in your blood, man. It, it's, you know, the entrepreneurial I, thing. Yeah. Eventually, I guess it's inevitable that you're yeah, going to get to that crossroad. It, it took a while, but at the same time, it's kind of like, if not now, then when? Right? If not now, then That's when? a very profound statement. How many of you are out there watching this? Maybe this is the video that decides, you know what? This guy said something very profound. If not now, when? You know what's interesting is that people wait until they get a death diagnosis to start living. Yeah. And this statement he just said is very profound. Take a second to let that absorb and crystallize. That if not now, when? It's always right now to pursue your dreams. And just like him right now, which I didn't know, this is totally off the cuff, I didn't know he was still with corporate America, Notice that you can do that. You don't have to leave something to go do another. You can do both and develop a transition into your real passion. So you start small, right? Sometimes we gotta get small to get big. Yes. Start small, pursue the dream, and then future cast and live that dream out full time. Hey man, I wanna thank you. This has been awesome. The last question I have for you is, so what's your favorite type of coffee? Like the sourcing of it, is it the Arabica bean? Is it Ethiopian? What, what's your favorite? Well, the Arabica bean for sure is a higher quality bean. 
Um, my favorite though, it's hard because I, I drink so much coffee and there's so much variety out there yeah. that one day this is my favorite, the next day something else is my favorite. Mm. I go back to my favorite bean from yesterday and that's evolved and changed. And it could be for the better or for the worse. So it's hard to pinpoint my favorite type of coffee, but I can tell you that my go-to coffee is a cup of black coffee. Just keep it simple. Just keep it simple. Awesome. No. Hey, man, I want to thank you again. And by the way, you're going to notice something I just noticed. We're wearing the same right. vest. Unplanned. This was totally coincidental. <laughs> but you know what? At the same time, there are no coincidences. This interview was meant to happen, man. So thank you so Absolutely. much for your time. All right, guys. Have a great day.